Welcome to HP Stormrunner. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a load test. If you haven't created a true client, true API, or load runner web script, check out the tutorials about scripting with those tools. If you have a script, let's get started. Go to the load tests page. This page contains a list of existing load tests and the status of the previous runs. We have created a sample load test for you. Don't click it now, it's for another tutorial. Click the Create button. A new load test will be created. Give it a meaningful name and a description. Go to the Scripts tab. Click Upload and upload the script you have created. True Client and Load Runner web scripts are expected to be in zip format, whereas True API scripts are expected to be in TGZ format. The selected script is added to the test scripts list. Set the number of users for this script to 10. Send the ramp up to 1 minute, duration to 5 minutes, in teardown to 1 minute. Notice the preview graph changes as you set these values. When you've uploaded the script, we've saved it for you in the Assets page. This means you can reuse it for other load tests, testing a similar workflow. Let's edit again for this load test. Click Add from Assets and choose your script. Another scheduling row will be added to the scripts table. For the newly added row, set the number of users to 5, set the duration to 7 minutes, and leave the ramp up and teardown to 0. This means that this group of users will ramp up immediately at the start of the test instead of ramping up one by one over the course of one minute. Go to the Monitors tab. This tab enables you to configure monitors in your application as the load test is running, providing you with insights into your application's internal metrics. We have covered this feature in another video tutorial. Let's skip it for now, as it's not mandatory. Go to the Distributions tab. This tab enables you to set the geographical distribution of the users that will run during the test. Set the distributions to 60% of users running from US East and 40% of users running from US West. Be sure to watch our Runtime Dashboard tutorial in order to learn how to show measurements from different geographical regions as the test runs. Go to the SLA tab. This tab shows you each transaction that was added to the script that are part of the load test. For each such transaction, you can configure the Service Level Agreement, or SLA, for that transaction. The SLA is commonly used term for a pass-fail criteria in a load test. Currently, we allow you to define an SLA for the average transaction response time for each transaction. For example, if you require that the time a user spends performing a certain action on your web application takes no more than 5 seconds, the SLA for the relevant transaction is 5. If you wish for a certain transaction not to have a pass-fail criteria, just leave the SLA value for it empty. But notice that in order for the load test to have a significant pass-fail criteria, it must have one or more transactions with a defined SLA. And that's it! Creating a load test is as easy as 1, 2, 3. You can now click Run Test and switch to our tutorial about analyzing test results. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment on the YouTube page for this video. For more helpful tutorials, visit our YouTube channel.